Okay, the game we're going to take a look at is 1815, the Waterloo Campaign, and it was published by GDW in 1975, and uh, later reworked into a second edition in 1981, and the designer was Frank Chadwick. So we're going to take a look at the board, the pieces, and I'll make some comments on the game itself, and uh, how the game generally plays. Now we'll take an overall look at the map. Now I've set up the... Um, the campaign as uh, for the morning of June 16th. So the map does cover the whole campaign of Waterloo. In many ways it resembles the 1962 version of Waterloo done by Avalon Hill. So here we have the town of Gassel. Here we have Ligny and part of the Prussian army. Prussian army coming up here this way. That's Quatre Bras with part of Wellington's forces. And way back here is Waterloo itself and Mont Saint Jean. Here is a Wave where the uh, Prussian army uh, retreated to. So those of you familiar with the campaign know that the French under Napoleon engaged the Prussians here at Ligny, drove them back, uh, the Prussians retreated back to Wav. Grouchy was sent to pursue the Prussians and to keep them from rejoining Wellington. And on the second day, June 17th, both armies um, were in, getting in position and marching to Waterloo. And on the third day, June 18th, we have crossed the, uh, the great battle around here at uh, Mont Saint Jean near Waterloo, with the Prussian Corps eventually reinforcing Wellington's left and crushing the uh, French right. So this campaign covering this area allows you to explore all the alternatives that were open to Napoleon, much like the old Avalon Hill version was. Let's take a look at some of the counters uh, and the setup. Okay, as you can see, the counters are quite clear and functional. They were done in the old style with the NATO symbols. And here we have uh, Van Damme's Third Corps and the Imperial Guard. And they're all uh, set up here around Charleroi. Now, you are allowed some um, leeway in the setup. I've just done a setup for the pur purpose of the video. And uh, you can see part of Blucher's uh, Corps under Zeton there. Prussians are in green, the French are in blue. And over here near Gussell, we've got uh, Ney's Corps, or Ney's Wing, actually, under General Riel. Now, the counters, um, I thought, were just clear and functional. I know it's very fashionable these days to have very, very colorful counters. And I'm not against colorful counters, but um, I am against them when they obscure the information on the game. And these, um, well, echo a different time and... Uh, counters are quite nice. We'll take a look at the counters here around uh, Quatre Bras. That's Wellington himself. And you've got Optals batteries there and uh, some troops. I think the green there are Netherlands troops, I believe. So the um, Allied forces are uh, various color colors, being a multinational force. So the board was quite nice. I thought it was very functional. Here's some more Prussians there on the right which will be reinforcing at Sambref. Okay, a closer look at where the battle proper was fought. Here's La Belleance, La Haye Saint, Mont Saint Jean, and further up here, Waterloo. And over here, of course, the roads at Ohain, Chapelle, Saint Lambert, and Lasnay, where the Prussian uh, corps eventually uh, crushed the French right. So the um, the board was, uh, I don't know, kind of plain but functional. I really liked it. Uh, you can see the forest depictions, the rivers. I thought the towns were kind of neat looking. Just a, a nice looking map. There's your turn record chart, which covers in three days. Each turn covers about one hour of time. They also have some special night uh, turns, which consume several hours. And there's your map legend. Okay, the rules were not overly complicated. They were about seven pages in length using the uh, paragraph form that GDW was kind of going with in those days. Uh, not all subcased with references and stuff and no index, but uh, it was not a difficult game to learn. Um, uh, the designer was not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything like that, but it did have some neat concepts that I really liked in it. Uh, the way cavalry worked and the way artillery worked. I'll tell you a little bit about that. 
I really like the way the cavalry worked in this game. Now the game did have uh, rigid zones of control, but cavalry was allowed to disengage from zones of control. So if we had uh, Soar's Prussian cavalry here at the beginning of the turn, being cavalry would be allowed to break off. Um, they were simple but effective. Now infantry was a different, different thing entirely. Once you were engaged, they were locked zones of control, and you had to have a fight to the finish uh, to drive either the attacker or the defender of way or away. Now, one thing I liked about the cavalry, like a lot of games, cavalry charges and charges and just charges all day with no uh, no ill effects. But in this game, if a cavalry was in a, a charge, after the charge, a little wee marker called blown was put on it. And the cavalry unit, by the use of various rules, had to uh, rest before it could attack again. Often it was until the next day, actually. But there were rules to uh, uh, rest them before that. But the very fact that they were there was kind of neat. Now, another rule I like was the way the artillery worked. Quite different than any other game I've seen. They had this attack factor, which is rather low, 4. Then they had this incredible kind of defense value, which was, uh, in this example, 17. And a uh, movement factor of 4. Artillery could attack with this 4 value, it could move like any other unit, and attack with 4. But if you were patient and waited and set up your artillery, if the artillery did not move, you could use this defense value as the bombardment value, and it had a range of 2. So if Roll's artillery here it took its time and waited and emplaced itself, and if the French allowed them, he could use this bombardment value of 17. So although the game used a lot of basic hex grid principles, there were a couple of neat innovative ideas in it that I really liked. Another thing I liked was the concept of these setup cards. Now these were a throwback to the old Avalon Hill days and uh, not too many companies are using them now and I don't know why, they were very handy. Where you had these cards where you set up the units um, and then you could set them up on the board. It was very handy for studying your order of battle and um, I can't understand why companies haven't gone with that idea anymore. In this game, you got three of these setup cards, and I found them very handy for uh, setting up and sorting the counters, by the way. Okay, well, there's your standard combat results table. Odds of 1 to 5 being at the low end, odds of 6 to 1 being at the high end. You had an initiative table, because there was a, a command structure to it and a morale recovery table. Now, I might point out that this makes it quite different than the original Avalon Hill game. Now the original uh, Avalon Hill game you could move just every counter on the board instantly. This one is a little different. You had to organize your forces and uh, uh, kind of obey the chain of command. And there's your terrain effects chart. There are some rules for uh, anglo allied uh, units that were off of the board that may enter or may not. These were uh, optional rules. And the same for the Prussians. So uh, let's make a comment then on the general play of the game. Well overall I like the game very much. Now I'm going from memory here because I haven't played it in quite a long time. In fact I'm going to try a solitaire game today. But um, from my memory I recall that the French generally did push the Prussians back from Ligny. Um, Ney usually pushed away Wellington uh, at uh, Quatre Bras. And the second day, generally, was the French units moving uh, down these roads to the Waterloo, Mont Saint Jean area, and the Prussians retreating to Wavre. So it kind of went historically. I remember the second day, June 17th, being rather slow though, because you had these mud rules, and these are just ferocious. The men just literally crawl and you want to kind of stay close to roads. So my recollection is that June 17th was a little, almost a little boring to play. Not much happened. It was mainly the movements to Waterloo. But once you got the armies assembled around uh, Waterloo and Mont Saint Jean, you had the final conflict here on the 18th, and uh, that's where you would, the battle is where you decided. So that's all I really have to say about um, 1815, the Waterloo campaign. Uh, it was a good game. I uh, really liked it. And um, I think I'll try a replay here. And uh, I don't know if I'll photograph any of it. But um, 
Maybe you get the chance to uh, get a copy of 1815 The Waterloo Campaign or play it. I think you'd like it. Now there's many, many games out there on the Waterloo um, Campaign and the battle itself. And uh, I suspect with the anniversary coming up in 2015, we're probably uh, very likely going to see more. But um, this is an early one, designed in 1981, and um, I thought it was a very good game. So uh, that's it for GGW's 1815, the Waterloo Campaign.